Hello, I'm Andrew Mull, AARP Louisiana Director of Advocacy. It's Monday, and that means another episode of AARP's Advocacy in Motion. This is a show committed to issues that our 50 plus population care about, like family caregiving, healthcare access, and financial resiliency. And honestly, most of our shows have focused on the caregiving and healthcare aspects. So this is the first time we've dived into the financial side of things. And with that, our guest today, Tom Nichols. Tom, how are you doing? Good, Andrew. Thank you very much. How are you? Doing great. Uh, so, Tom, in a minute, we're going to get to all the excitement up on the Hill in Washington. Uh, but first, what's been going on with you these days? Well, um, I, much much like everyone else these days, I've been kind of staying pretty close to the apartment here in D.C. Um, I'm very fortunate, though, that uh, one of the things that I like to do most, uh, which is to golf, um, is actually sort of built for social distancing. So I've been doing some of that and uh, and a little bit of hiking. I'm not sure if uh, if Netflix binging counts as a as a hobby these days, but, uh, you know, I've got a lot of that going on, too. Have you been able to shave any strokes off your handicap? Uh, no, unfortunately, I think it's going in the other direction these days. <laughs> um, we'll keep at it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of nice, a uh, lot of nice courses up there. I've played a couple myself, so it's a nice place. I bet, I bet the weather is pretty good right now to to get out there and hit some, right? It is. I'm I'm a I'm a Pennsylvania boy, um, and so uh, DC weather tends to be a little bit warmer than I than I prefer. But you know, you have to uh, you have to go with what you're given. Well, and we should mention, Tom, you are with AARP's Government Affairs uh, Federal Lobbyist, uh, and you're located as as you mentioned in DC. Um, so let's let's turn to um, a little bit about what's been going on. So. Uh, about a, I guess it's been about a, a week or two. We passed a pretty major milestone uh, with the Social Security Act turning 85 years old. And Tom, you're going to talk a little bit about that celebration and also sort of the past, present, and the future of Social Security. So, Tom, first off, let's start with the past and let's rewind 85 years back to August 14th, I guess, of 1935. That's right. Yep. August 14th, 1935, uh, FDR signed the uh, Social Security Act into law and uh, established, frankly, what is probably one of the most, if not the most successful government programs uh, in in history. Um, you know, it's it's hard to overstate, I think, the impact that Social Security has had over the past 85 years, and I think that it will have uh, moving forward. You know, of course, it originally started um, as a retirement program, right? Uh, coming out of the Great Depression, um, FDR wanted to make sure that people did not outlive their savings in retirement and then, and then eventually um, be forced into poverty, frankly. Uh, you know, when I used to work on Capitol Hill, my, my former boss used to talk about the days when we had things called poor farms uh, throughout the country. And, you know, that was one of the major benefits of Social Security, of course, is to is to make sure that that type of thing doesn't happen and that people can still retire with the dignity that they've earned. Um, now, of course, now in it, you know, since 1935, Social Security has actually been improved over the years. There have been other benefits that have been added to it, um, which are also incredibly valuable to people. Um, you know, uh, one of the first improvements was around uh, a survivor, a spousal and child benefits to, to those whose primary breadwinner uh, passed away. Uh, in the 1950s, uh, they added uh, disability insurance as well. So for those workers who become disabled uh, on the job, 
uh, and and lose their income because of that, that there are protections that are involved there. Uh, and then, um, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, because there, you know, there are other uh, important benefits, but, uh, you know, in the early 1970s, they also added uh, a cost of living adjustment, which I know that many of our viewers uh, value every year because it helps to make sure that the benefits that they've earned uh, are not uh, eroded by increasing prices. How often do they update the cost of living adjustment? So every so that's an annual process. So an annual uh, process. yes, yep. Uh, they they basically they compare uh, inflation from one third quarter to the previous third quarter, and then they generally announce that in somewhere around October for what the following uh, cola will be for the next year. Gotcha. Um, so. Tom, as you can probably imagine, we have a lot of, uh, and you kind of alluded to it, we have a lot of people watching right now that are retired and are receiving Social Security or could be on the verge of retiring. Uh, we also probably have a lot of people watching who are currently contributing to the system. So who currently is relying on Social Security in Louisiana? And then I guess extended beyond that across the United States. So first, Louisiana, and then maybe talk broadly about the United States. Uh, sure, no problem. So uh, one of the nice things about Social Security is that they actually provide these sort of statistics for us uh, at the state and uh, and lower levels, actually, congressional district. So we, we can tell by from Social Security's data that there are about 922,000 Social Security beneficiaries in Louisiana right now. And that includes about 560,000 folks who are retirees, 152,000 uh, who are workers who, uh, who have become disabled, and also 83,000 survivors, like I said, the, the spouses and children of, of workers. And you know, it's incredibly important, Social Security is in Louisiana, with 55% of Louisianans relying on it for 50% or more of their income, and 34% relying on it for 90% or more of their income. So it's a really, wow. really important program and, and plays a really significant role in the financial security of just tens of thousands of Louisianans. Um, you know, at the national level, the, the numbers are frankly even more staggering. You know, there are, right now there are 64 million Americans who receive social security benefits. Um, which includes 45.8 million retirees, 5.9 million survivors, and 8.3 million workers with disabilities. And you had asked about the folks who contribute to Social Security. So that's that's workers. Um, the vast majority of workers are contributing to Social Security. And that's about 178 million workers who are contributing to the system uh, actually in, in 2019, the most recent numbers. So um, again, with, with those numbers, you can see how important Social Security is, not only for the folks who are currently receiving benefits, but also that there are just a staggering number, 178 million folks who are going to be relying on Social Security and are contributing with each and every paycheck and are, and are earning their benefits as we speak. Yeah. Um, and, you know, since we're talking about present day, um, we probably shouldn't go too much further without addressing a lot of the things that are on people's minds right now in the midst of the, the uh, coronavirus pa pandemic. So what's the latest with uh, Social Security uh, and what's been going on this summer. Sure, absolutely. So actually, if you wouldn't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up one second because I wanted to um, at least talk about the 85th anniversary a little oh, bit absolutely. more. Yes. Um, and it's something that I forgot to uh, share earlier um, is how uh, popular uh, Social Security remains. Again, I mean, we know that there are just a significant numbers of people who rely on the program, but we're also very heartened recently, AARP conducted a survey around the 85th anniversary to sort of gauge people's uh, uh, beliefs and thoughts about Social Security. And we are once again, really heartened by the response to that particular survey with the vast majority of Americans you know, it was, it was and, and it didn't matter based on party affiliation. It was 93% of Republicans, 99% of Democrats, and 92% of independents who saw Social Security as a, a as an important government program. And I think it, with the particularly with the impact of the that the coronavirus has had on uh, on the economic prospects of a lot of folks. 
uh, 56% actually believe that the program is even more important uh, for retirees in, in light of the pandemic. So uh, just an important thing that, to, to share. Um, and one additional aspect too, is that even though that social security is incredibly important to people, the benefits are actually quite modest, right? So average benefits around the country. So this is, this is nationally, so not, not specific to Louisiana, but you know, it's about $1,500 a month for retirees and about $1,260 a month for, for those with disabilities. So it's incredibly important, but then at the same time, we, you know, we can't forget that these benefits are pretty modest too. Yeah. Um, so moving into your question about what's been going on, um, so I will tell you that from a social security perspective, it has been really an, an incredibly busy, uh, you know, five months pretty much since, uh, since the pandemic really, really started, uh, you know, and, and had us working on a lot of important things related to social security. Um, I think what, this is sort of tangentially related to social security, but one of the things that we have spent a significant amount of time on was making sure that social security recipients were able to receive their the full $1,200 economic stimulus payment that was included in the CARES Act, right? That was a really important thing mm -hmm. for a lot of people. We got a lot of folks who are, who are really uh, interested in that particular issue and AARP was very pleased to have worked to, to get that full $1,200 payment to social security beneficiaries. Right. And then related to that, the sort of follow-up was that we wanted to make sure that those payments went out to social security recipients, even those who don't normally file taxes, we wanted to make sure that those payments went out automatically to folks and so that, and that they didn't have to file additional tax paperwork or something along those lines, which we were also very excited to, you know, have accomplished, right? So people yeah. got their, their payments automatically. Well, that was a big um, question that was along, on a lot of our, you know, a lot on, on the mind of a lot of the members here in Louisiana was- sure. The, you know, the process that they'd have to go through to receive that. You know. Yeah. And we wanted to make sure that that was as simple as possible. Right. I mean, yeah. and, and we do have to give a lot of credit to the Treasury Department and IRS. Now, granted, we, we understand that, you know, when you're trying to get 160 million checks out to people as quickly as possible, that there are always going to be hang ups. But we really we appreciate all the efforts that the Treasury Department uh, did in order to get those payments out and to get them out in, in a way that was as easy as possible for folks. Now, we recognize that there are probably still folks out there who are saying, I, you know, that I haven't necessarily gotten my check yet. I'm I'm hoping that that's a handful of folks. Again, we know that there's about 160 million uh, payments that have already gone out. Yeah, we heard about maybe one or two people that, you know, struggled with it. But you, like you said, it was a very, very small number. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, great. Um, yes. And so, and there are a couple other things that related to that, you know, so, uh, there are, we know that there are a lot of older folks who are on social security who are perhaps caring for dependent grandchildren, that they are actual dependents of them. Right. Um, yeah. And so there, the CARES Act uh, had, in addition to the $1,200 stimulus payments, there were associated $500 payments per, per dependent child. And so for those uh, folks on social security, and other federal benef uh, benefit programs uh, who didn't, who don't normally file taxes, the IRS gave them a very, very brief window to sort of let them know that they had these dependent children in order to be mm -hmm. able to claim those $500 payments. And so we had worked for quite a while to make sure that uh, that older Americans on Social Security were able to get those $500 payments this year instead of having to wait until 2021 to file their 2020 taxes. And we were very pleased to see uh, on August 14th, actually, the Social Security's 85th anniversary day, that the IRS announced that they were going to be reopening this process for Social Security beneficiaries, SSI beneficiaries, folks on VA benefits and railroad retirees, that they were going to be able to once again access the IRS's no filer system in order to mm -hmm. I identify these, these younger dependents and then be able to claim those $500 payments this year. Wow. Well, um, anything else as far uh, as what, is that? 
I've had a very busy five months, so yes. Yeah, I was about to say, well, what else can you uh, cram into those five months? Sure. Well, so we had some very specific things that are then on the horizon, I think, because okay. of the coronavirus, right? Um, so uh, there, and these these get a little bit technical, so I'll, I'll try to not not do that to, to your audience. But um, so um, when Social Security calculates your benefits, what they do is they do something called wage indexing, right? Which is that they, throughout your entire career, what they'll do is, is that two years before you're eligible to retire, so when you're 60, they will go back through your old wages and they'll sort of update those older wages to sort of today's numbers. So my, my best example is to say that, you know, in 1980, maybe $35,000 a year is now the equivalent of, let's say, $55,000 a year in terms of wages, mm -hmm. right? In terms of how and how um, our uh, living standards have improved, right? Well, and so right. They, they do this process to sort of update those older wage numbers, but they do it based on sort of the the current year's numbers right and because of the because of the widespread unemployment that has happened through no fault of anybody's in terms of the pandemic um, the the calculation that they would do for people who are 60 this year it may look much different than it otherwise would have and then end up resulting in a sort of a lower calculation so gotcha. we're working we're working very much on that to make sure that that those folks, who are turning 60 this year, that they don't see those sort of lifelong lower benefits in social security than they otherwise would have were it not for this substantial economic decline that we've that we've faced, right? Right. So the other issue with the economy that we're looking very much and, and sort of trying to anticipate what's gonna happen is, is that inflation, which has already been relatively low in some areas, mm -hmm. um, that, it may result in a very low to no cola for next year. It's more looking oh. like a very low cola as opposed to none. So please, to, and also these numbers are, we'll, we'll, we'll learn more in October, but we're, we're anticipating right now a very low cola. Now, the issue there is, of course, is that, and I think a, a lot of your folks may have seen, is that when they've been going to the grocery store lately, that a lot of their grocery items have increased in prices, right? And mm -hmm. So perhaps this inflation measurement that's being used isn't really capturing all of the, the, the increases in costs that older Americans are seeing in their grocery items, particularly in healthcare, which is always an issue in terms of that the cost of healthcare tends to grow faster than the overall rate of other inflation out there. So it's a concern of ours and something that we're also paying attention to. Gotcha. Well, you talked about wages a little bit. So let's let's address the payroll tax. Uh, we're obviously hearing some news out of Washington about the suspension of the payroll tax, which I think really means the suspension of collections for Social Security and could possibly uh, put the whole program uh, in, in, in some level of peril, right? So what does this mean for people watching right now? What's the latest? So I, I think what it means right now and, and what we're doing is we're so first we have to wait for a little bit more information. Right. Sure. So th there's actually two two parts of this. The the first part is the, the president's executive order or executive action recently around yeah. defer, deferral of collection of payroll taxes from September through the end of the year. Right, so yeah, about yeah. about four months. Four months. Yeah. Um, right now, Treasury is the Treasury Department is responsible for 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 providing guidance on this particular plan, and they have yet to come out with that. Um, but what we have been doing, I think, on on the executive memorandum front, is that we have really been alerting uh, the uh, the administration the Treasury Department, the president, our concerns about this potential impact on Social Security, right? Especially on destabilizing the sort of long-term finances of the program. Again, we are still waiting for guidance from them, but mm -hmm. we note, you know, we, we do have to note that the payroll tax is, is really the primary way that Social Security uh, gets its finances, right? It is, uh, so so to, to sort of stop the collection for four months or, as the and the second part of this is the is the president's recent statements about eliminating the payroll tax, right? right. And and so, 
um, when when you eliminate the payroll tax, or if you were to eliminate the payroll tax, um, number one, you would need some type of a replacement in terms of making sure that we can continue to to have have the robust social security program that we have. Mm -hmm. um, so we have again sort of made sure that we have expressed to the president and the administration that suspending, reducing, or eliminating the contributions to social security that are made through the payroll tax will interfere with Social Security's long-term funding stream. And this is actually something that we've pointed out uh, previously too to President Obama in 2012 when they when they had another when they had a previous payroll tax holiday that this can undermine confidence in Social Security and you know put at risk the program's dedicated funding stream and the hard-earned benefits of American families, right? And so um, we are being vigilant about that. Uh, I know that our members are sharing their concerns with the White House. Um, and so we are we're actively engaged on, on these particular payroll issues. Payroll well, so tax. Speak, speaking of sharing concerns, even though the 85th anniversary has passed, uh, can people still take action to celebrate this milestone or what can uh, someone watching do right now to help protect social security? Yep, absolutely. So I would say that, you know, in addition to, to what you have up on the screen already, um, you know, my, my, my preference is that folks try to remain as informed as possible, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this goes back to my, my time on the Hill when I, when I was working for a member of Congress. Uh, members of Congress really do want to hear from their folks about how they feel about things. It, it really is, it's a, it's a, it is the most key thing about a congressional office is that they want to be able to hear from, from real uh, constituents about how they feel about the issues of the day, right? And so, so the first thing is, of course, to be informed about it is to stay informed, right? There are there are potential changes that come to Social Security either now or possibly in the future too. Because what what we didn't talk about is, of course, is that the the underlying thing here with Social Security is that um, you know we have a, a, a an insolvency date as far as the trust funds are concerned at 2035, and and what that means, of course, I think a lot of folks. Uh, believe that that means that Social Security is broke and that it doesn't have any money to pay benefits. But in actuality, what it means is that there would still be enough to pay 80% 80 of promised benefits, but that's not good enough, right? So there, that's the sort of always the underlying thing going on with Social Security. And so again, I, I would say that if folks should remain as informed as possible, and then also to be able to reach out to their members of Congress as often as possible to let them know what their thoughts are. Um, you know, I know that AARP has a very good sort of action alert system and things like that. I would highly recommend signing up for that just to be an informed constituent uh, and to share your perspective with your elected officials. It goes, it really does go a very long way. Well, let's show that title card again that had the information about how to get involved. There it is right there. You can go to action.aarp.org slash social security 85, or you can go to aarp.org slash retirement slash social security. And from that, that link actually takes you to a lot of resources, kind of like what you were saying, Tom, ways to stay informed, uh, to get up to speed on uh, the ins and outs of the program and what's really at stake. And then of course, if you want to sign the birthday card, you can sign that first, um, you can go to that first link and sign that, sign that birthday card. Well, Tom, uh, this has been a terrific conversation. Uh, is there anything uh, that we left out that you want to uh, remind viewers, people watching at home? Well, uh, like it for anything so else? let me say, let me say thank you very much again for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been very nice to have this conversation with your folks. I hope it was useful to to uh, folks in Louisiana. Um, my my reminder is again, I, I think to to restate what we've already stated, how how important Social Security is, which I know everybody already knows out there. But it you know it's not just a matter of of how important it is to sort of current current beneficiaries. We are also, and I know that a lot of folks are concerned out there about, about future beneficiaries, about their family, about their children and their grandchildren, that they, that they also deserve to have a social security system, a robust one that provides meaningful benefits to them that they're really going to need in their retirement years. And so I just want to, you know, point out that, uh, you know, we're concerned 
not only about uh, current beneficiaries, but about making sure that Social Security can be there for the next 85 years and not, and not just celebrating the past 85. Very well said. Very well said. Well, Tom, it's been great to catch up with you. And on behalf of AARP Louisiana, I want to say thank you for joining us and uh, keep hitting them straight out there um, and uh, try and get a few holes in between now and uh, before the weather starts to turn a little bit. Uh, I am absolutely going to try. <laughs> well, good. To our viewers, I want to encourage you to join our efforts uh, to help us. You can, of course, get more information if you go visit us on our AARP Louisiana Facebook page. You can also follow us on Twitter at AARP Louisiana. So thank you to everyone watching. Thank you, Tom, and keep that advocacy in motion.